expect the joiner to straighten our edge. Now one thing I want to mention is, uh, it's very tempting, you might ask yourself, well, after I flattened this face and I was already on the joiner, why wouldn't I just flip it up and straighten this edge right when I'm still at the joiner? Why go to the planer, flatten the other face, bring it back here, and straighten an edge? Well, when I just have one board, it may not matter. I might be able to put it right up against this edge and run it through and everything will be okay. But what if it tears out? What if that's the wrong grain direction going through the jointer? Because in the jointer, just like the planer, there is a proper grain direction. The cutter head in, in the jointer is going this way around. So I want the grain going down and sloping backwards towards the infeed table. That way, I'm going with the grain as I'm, as I'm cutting it. Well, on this board, it's relatively straight grain. I probably could get away with it, just flipping it up and running it through. But like I said, if the grain direction is incorrect, what I would need to do is flip it around like this and run it through. But now I've got a rough edge that I'm running against the fence. If I have a very large pile of boards that I'm running, and I start and I sat here and I flatten it and then did it. Well, this board works okay, so I'm going to put it on this cart. Next board tears out. Oh, I'm going to put that over here. Pretty soon I have a pile of boards that were okay, a pile of boards that uh, I got to come back to later. So I'm going to have to take these boards, bring them over to the planer, and just bring these ones back to the jointer. It gets confusing. If it's in a shop where there's uh, a lot of people using the machines, I'll be hogging two machines. Um, it's just not as efficient. If I have a uh, um, fair number of boards to do, I'm always going to do the face, bring them all over the planer, thickness them all, then bring them back and do the edges. Because now I have the flexibility that if I have some tear out as I'm running it through, I can just flip it around and run it the other direction and, and uh, be able to do everything I need to do right here. Because at this point, we're doing two things straightening this edge, but we also need it to be a square edge. So before we were using the jointer just to flatten. Now we're going to be simply flat flattening or straightening an edge, but also using the fence now to get a square corner on this edge. So it's very important that my fence be square to the table now for this particular operation. I can use my small square to double check that the fence is square. And you know, I can check it out here. I can check it here, and so on. But where's the important place to check it? The cutting action is going on right here at the cutter head. Sometimes these fences aren't perfectly flat, and they warp a little bit. And I can see that on this particular fence. It's not quite square out here but near the cutter head, it appears to be much more square. And that's where it's important to be square at. Now, this is a great way to, to, to do a quick check, but the real check is actually running a board through and double checking it. So I'm gonna have a test board again that I'm gonna run through, and I'm gonna check it with my square and see if I'm actually getting a square cut. So at this point, unlike flattening, where we just ran it through and didn't care about the fence here, it's very important that I'm holding it up against the fence as well as pushing down and keeping the pressure onto the outfeed table. But here I want to make sure that I'm pushing up against the fence right at the cutter head. And again, uh, if there's a bow on the board, I want the bow running up because it's going to be much easier for me to flatten it. This one, uh, I'm not as worried about. Typically, one of the other problems that I can have, one of the other problems that I can have when I'm running a board through the jointer is almost similar to what I had on the planer, which is if I press in the wrong spot, if I had a bow, I could con uh, conceivably press that board down, take the material off, and then it'll spring back up when I come out. That's that's why I tried to find the points, the pressure points that would allow me to run it through without twisting or bending the board. That's not as big of a deal. Or big of a problem when I'm running boards on edge. It's very hard to push down 
and spring a board when it's on edge like this. So I can see. I, I don't have to worry as much about where I'm pressing as long as the bow is going up. But I'm going to be pressing inward here, and I'm going to be getting my pressure to the outfeed table as quickly as possible. Pressing up against here, make sure that if I've got a square fence, I'm going to get a square cut. So I'm going to test that out. this test board here. And I'm going to use this square to check it. And the proper way to check with the square is not just to jam it on the board because that can uh, fool me into thinking that it's square when it's not. What you really need to do is hold it up to the light put this part of the square on the board and slowly bring it down until it just touches. And that is uh, perfectly square. So I know my fence is set correctly. So now I can go and straighten the edges of my boards. So we're back to the piece that we're working with here. And you can see the grain direction. It has a very distinct sloping downward to the back. So I want to run it this way, not this way. I've got a, a rough edge here. It's, it's relatively straight. A little bit of a bow here in the center, so I'm going to run it that way. Making sure to keep pressure up against the fence. some no marks here and then smooth and then some no marks again. Usually we're going to use this as a finished edge for something. So we want it nice and smooth. We don't want to have to sand those out again later because that will give us a, an uneven edge. It will just cause more time. It's more labor. Uh, we don't want to have to deal with it. The last thing I'm going to do is just double check that I've got a square edge. I'm going to check in a couple places and it looks pretty good. Sometimes you'll find that it's a little bit out of square in one spot, and, but mostly square, and, and this one's looking pretty good. Now I've got a really nice, smooth, straight, and square edge. And this is what we can use to go to the table saw now and, and reference it against the face and rip it to width. <laughs> 